Hey everybody, Spiral Sigil here, bringing you Shovel Knight, an absolutely an amazing example of how good retro games can still be made in this day and age. Uh, I was going to be continuing on with my follow playthrough, but I decided to put that on break for now, like I always have a tendency to do, so I'll make the joke before you can, uh, because this was just gifted to me by a viewer, and I really, I'm, like, I don't know if it was set with the inclination that they wanted me to record it, but I've already played through it, I've already beaten it, and I loved it, I want to play through it again, so I'm going to record it. So, hey, if you're watching, you know who you are, this is for you. So we're going to go through this. Uh, I've already beaten it once, it only took me a couple days to do it, because I had to, I had to work on other stuff with Pocky me. But I'm not continuing over my same file with all my equipment on it. I'd rather play it fresh. I always do that. So that anyone who hasn't played through this game yet won't like, be like, hey, why don't I have that cool-ass ability you have right there? So, there you go. And the game also starts off with a good, like, ni like nice artwork and nice storyline, too. Long ago, the lands were untamed and roamed by legendary adventurers. You have to go a little faster, game. Of all heroes, none shone brighter than Shovel Knight and Shield Knight. Yeah, everybody in this game is something knight, basically. Which is kind of a cool idea. But the travels together ended at the Tower of Fate when a cursed amulet wrought a terrible magic. It's terrible. When Shovel Knight awoke, the tower was sealed, and Shield Knight was gone. It was tragic. His spirit broken, a grieving Shovel Knight went to a life of solitude and farming. He was well suited for the latter. With the shovel and all, you see. But without champions, the land was seized by a vile power, the Enchantress, the Enchantress and her Order of No Quarter. She was a big fan of rhyming, you see. A Dr. Seuss child, to be sure. Now the tower is unsealed and devastation looms. A new adventure is about to begin. I have one question, though. Why did the tower suddenly get unsealed? It's like the Enchantress just opened up her door. It's like, I'm gonna take this shit, but here's your chance to defeat me. Anyway, the mechanics are pretty simple. You've got your jump. You've got your attack, and the most important thing in the entire game, you've got your down stab. Simply jump and hold down, and you will stab down. This is infinitely more useful than anything else you will pick up in the entire game. And you'll see why when I start hitting some boss fights. Also, it's 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 more or less like an instant kill for most of the minor enemies in the game. I mean, your attack is too, but I mean, you can bounce off and not lose any momentum from doing it. Digging up the treasure there gives you just more money to spend on upgrades later. You shouldn't get preoccupied with like, killing every single enemy on screen. They will respawn the moment you walk away from them. On the same screen, just the moment you like leave their spawning area, they'll respawn. So basically exactly like the old school Nintendo games. Which is good. I mean, it's, it's difficult without being unfair, and I like it. In my, in my opinion, it's... It's close to, like, some of the older Mega Man games for its difficulty, as well as, like, the original TMNT game that I covered ages ago. Except without being unfair, like, th there's several, uh, there's several homages to other NES games as well. Like, there's a boss that's really, really close to, like, the way, um, you fight Death in Castlevania. Except he doesn't throw thousands of mini sights at you and fight like a cheating bitch. Fuck you, dragon. Do, do, do you see how useful this downstab is? Look at this doesn't even stand a chance against you. Catch, asshole! Now, I do have most of the achievements already for this game, but I'm missing a few kind of key ones. Like, I don't have all the song lists, so if you see me missing any song lists in the video, please let me know. I'll go back and I'll pick it up. I'm doing a video if you want. Uh, I'm also missing the one for beating any level without getting hit. I always need to take a bit of stupid damage at some point. If not, the boss will usually whack me at least once while I'm trying to do something stylish or stupid. Usually stupid. I did finally get the achievement for um, for getting through this without actually dying on uh, one of my practice runs before I started recording this. I decided to redo the first level here again a couple times just to make sure I still had it all down after I beat the game. There's our first song list. Oh yeah. That dead. So, like I said, like everything for this game holds up immensely well. The graphics, the music, the controls. Controls are some of the best controls I've seen for um for like a mock-up NES classic game like this that I've ever seen before. Everything feels like it just works, which is more I can say more than I can say for most games like this. Yoink. Die. Give me slide. 
There. Die. Now, uh, as I'm playing through this, I'll also be pointing out stupid things I did the very first time I played through this. For example, this little tray here, I did this for about five minutes before giving up and going on. Never thought to try and dig it up. So, yeah, there's that. Not my proudest moment, but at that point I was still technically at full health, so I guess I can't lament it too much. The time I took damage in this was against the second mini boss fight. Mostly because of his confined area, I, I got hit stupidly trying to approach him. Hopefully that won't happen this time, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, obvious secret area is obvious. Some of them, well, actually most of them, were marked with some kind of like little symbol, like this clod of dirt here, that you can pretty easily dig out of the way. But there is a few of them, including one in this stage that isn't marked. You're basically only given like a hint later on after you pass it that you could have gone past it. Thankfully, it's like the next screen, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Dragon. And ladder. I think it's, yeah, it's the screen here. This is the screen where it has a hidden little thing. Uh, be careful when you're breaking some of these, because sometimes an enemy will just charge you as soon as you get it open. Which is really annoying when you're trying to avoid taking damage. But yeah, the wall there didn't have any indication on it that you could break it. You just kind of have to know. Or come to this screen when you see the, uh, the ladder here. I also love the little digging chest animation there. Where you just jump on it and you throw everything out of the chest. At the checkpoint. I know you can eventually break these, but I think it's from the second level onwards. There's an achievement for breaking every one of them in the game. I have to assume that doesn't include the ones you can't break right now. Uh, second mini boss here? Yeah. This is where I usually get hit, because the fucking bubbles that he throws out at you. You gotta be careful when you're killing this guy here, because if you kill him too well, all of your money's gonna go in the water, or in the, the pit there. Also, you could just fall into the pit if you're being stupid. Always give that skeleton a second to do that, because if not, you run up, he hits you, and you bounce back, Ninja Gaiden style, into that fucking pit. It is infinitely frustrating. If you ever want to stop a downstab like this, like if you're afraid of breaking the platform beneath you, uh, just simply attack with your weapon, you'll do it right there. I think it's all of them. Get the gem. Dig up this. You will eventually pick up upgrades for your, uh, your weapon that will allow you to dig up whole piles of stuff like that in one go, as opposed to having to swing at it like, was it, four or five times? It's not really a huge hassle to have to do that, though, so... Like, it's like the last upgrade I ever bothered to grab. The other two are far and away more useful, in my opinion. Although I say that, and I can't quite remember what one of them does. I know one of them is... Uh, you, you can lose a shockwave if you're at full health, but now I'm having trouble remembering what the other one is. She gives you food before the boss fight. I knew you'd show your face sooner or later, the Cerulean coward. Turn back, Shovel Knight. There's nothing here for you anymore. Stand aside, Black Knight. I've no quarrel with you. I must return to the Tower of Fate. Your time away has dulled your senses, couldn't you see? This entire valley has been conquered by the Enchantress. And her invincible knights of the Order of No Quarter stand between you and the Tower. But none of that matters, because anyone after the Enchantress has to go through me. Steal thy shovel. <laughs> I, I, I paid for this, okay? I didn't steal this. Alright, so just abuse the shit out of your downstab, and this guy's pretty much a cakewalk. Now, granted, you may take a bit of stupid damage when he starts doing his own little stabby attacks. You can also reflect his attacks back at him, if you're really wily about it. Ah, damn it. Fuck your jump attack. I want to get through this with getting hit. Fuck you. If you kill him by reflecting his own attack back at him, there is an achievement to be made from that, so... I've already nailed that one myself, so I'm not really too worried about it. I believe the I believe the achievement is you're fired. Or something to that effect. So if I hadn't been hit twice there, I would have gotten an achievement for that, because I still don't have that one yet, but what can you do? The Black Knight fights like a dirty bitch sometimes. He also runs like a dirty bitch sometimes, too. Aha! I win! 
And then after every time you beat a level, you end up here at a campfire, have a little snooze. Sometimes you'll dream about Shovel Knight, or Shield Knight. Just dream about yourself, that makes sense. You'll dream about Shield Knight. It's actually really cute the way they did this. Because it really shows your character, like he feels remorse over not being able to save the one he cares about. Th this first one's really easy, where you all you can do is catch her, but later on you have to fight off scores of enemies while you're trying to catch her. Then you wake up and you realize, damn, it was a dream. But before you leave, be sure to put up that fire. There's money in there for some reason. I, I guess Shovel Knight decided he didn't need all those riches, decided to burn most of them. Alright. Well, that is it for episode one. So in the next episode, we'll be uh, tackling the village and then heading up after either King's Knight or Spectre Knight. I kind of like Spectre Knight's fight quite a bit, so I'll probably tackle him first. But in the meantime, as always, if you like this video, you want to see more, rate, comment, subscribe, leave me a comment, leave me a like, leave me anything like that. I'm just repeating myself twice. And let me know what you think. Until then, stay tuned for more. Sigil out.